Okay. My name is Mohammed Awad. I'm a PhD student with Dr. Nakmani. And today I'm going to give you a lecture about basic segmentation and image. So here's the outline. First, I'm going to talk about introduction to segmentation. Then I'm going to talk about one method of segmentation, which is threshold. Because I have one hour limit. So I can't talk about all methods. In threshold, there's two kind of threshold we can do. One is manual, just you look at the image or look at the histogram. You specify the threshold you want to use or thresholds, multiple thresholds. Second, there's some method you can do it automatically. You can choose the threshold. Here's introduction to segmentation. So why we use segmentation? Basically, we need to group image and sections or objects. Like in this image, we have each, those, those like, the grass is one thing, sky, the animals, another thing, or here, like, persons, one object, and background, one object, the sky is one object, the grass is one object. So group, we try to group coherent stuff together, or coherent pixel together, that means something, or belong to same thing. So we group similar group of pixels together. This is like a super pixel in MATLAB. We're going to see it later. But basically we group like each similar looking pixel together. Like here, this, if you look at shoulder of this player, you see the white is grouped together and this area, the background of the black grouped together. Here's, you see separation between grass and the white. And so simplest way to find the threshold or the separate image in two thing, uh, two objects or multiple objects is the intensity, which is the how much is the intensity of the image or illumination of the image. Like if you look at this picture, you can see if when you look at the gray scale, if you look at the histogram, you see like black, uh, white pixels or I mean a bright pixel here and dark pixel. And we can choose a threshold that we can separate two groups of pixels together. Like we get, here's the white, and the, the white pixel represent the bright, and the black represent the darker pixels in the image. So image segmentation usually, it's a, like a pre-processing step of the image. And as we saw, we can choose it like manually, but in most recent years, people tried to find the, like an automatic segmentation method to segment the image based on like a given criteria. But it's still in, uh, in research and, and there's a lot of different methods and people still working on it to optimize it. And in segment, you can, as we said, we, we try to group similar pixels together or group objects together. It's like uh, here it says, in this example, you have two different things, but it's basically the same question, which is grouping stuff together. Like here, we have like a background and a front ground, or, or an object, and we separate the background from the front ground. In this case, we separate like multiple objects, which is here you get the tiger, grass, and the lake over there. But they are the same thing, but they are similar, not the same thing. But uh, the question is the same. We try to group like meaningful stuff together, so further, so we can further analyze them. So as we said, we try to group stuff together. But the question is, what what is useful or what we're looking for? Like in the previous picture, we might be looking for the tiger alone. So we need to find like criteria to find the pixels in the target that goes together. So we need to know what we're looking for before we do segmentation. So we can decide on the method or how we group pixels together. And here's some possible output. Here, this is black and white image, which is just basically grouping the picture into two groups, bright and dark. Or contour, this could be like edge detection to find the contour of something. Or four colored, like we or labeled, which is just a group in the pixel into three or four different groups. Each group will represent a different color. Like for this case, we're using four colors. 
this each color could mean something else. Like for each state could mean color is like mean how much is population. You can group it based on population, something like that. You can think of it for each color to represent different stuff. So how we can segment the picture? The basic properties of picture is colors and contour, which is a gray level, a gray values are included in colors. So the basic stuff is we look at the pixels, we try to group like similar color pixels together, or as we saw previously, the contours, like similar structure together. So we know the goal of the segmentation is group pixels that belong together or similar pixels together or pixels that belong to the same object together. And here we're talking about top down or bottom up segmentation. In top down we pixel, we pixels belong together because they are from the same object. I we have, I have another slide about this, about the top down and bottom up uh, methods. And here's like top down and bottom method uh, like explained. Okay. In the top down, first we segment the image, then we find the object. In the bottom up, I mean the bottom up is we first segment the image, then we find the object. In the top down is basically we try to find pixel based on criteria or uh, pre, uh, pre specified the classes to find the image, like in the horse case. Now, threshold. Thresholding is the simplest method of finding the, the separation in image or detecting different stuff in the image. Basically, we know most of the thresholding methods works on gray level images, which is it looks at the pixels and try to separate the pixels based on intensity and a given threshold. As we said, darker image would go together and brighter image goes together based on the given criteria that either user specified or it could be automatically based on the some function that look at the histogram of the image. Like after we specify the threshold, like we change the pixels with darker, uh, darker gray level to zero and brighter to one. So we have like a binary image of zero and one or zero and 255. And threshold and histogram, histogram is very useful for detecting the threshold because it give you features or you get, tell you the grouping of the pixels. Like if you look at the mean, it gives you the center of, of those pixels and the standard deviation, how far they are from each other. The values of the histogram, if you got like two binomial distribution, you know where's the middle or the separation between two different histogram, I mean two different normal distribution of pixels. And here's like an image of the histogram. Like this one is binomial distribution, we can see from here, like we have two groups of pixels, those bright and those, I mean those dark and those bright pixel, and we can separate them if we choose this threshold. This looks like like 150, so we can have a clear separation. Or we can separate them if we have multiple like uh, distributions, we can separate them with multiple thresholds. Like in this case, if I want to get this region, we can specify that those two threshold to extract those pixels value or those ranges of gray levels or intensity together. So the histogram is one of the most useful tools to decide the threshold to choose in image segmentation. And here are some images and their histogram, as we saw before. We got this image, which has almost two different classes or two different groups of intensities or gray level. Here's the dark background. You can see all, they have like a normal distribution. And the object or the square object is pixel are grouped together in this smaller 
distribution. Same way if we have like three different groups, or you can say three different regions, like dark circle you have here, and you have this distribution represent the square and the rectang rectangle, which is not as dark as the circle. And you have like a background here, which is, this is the background. In threshold, basically, we try to find a threshold. Like for this case, we can have a cutoff threshold here, here and make everything below threshold zero and everything above it one. Or we can do the opposite. You can invert the image if you desire to have like the black, everything like a black uh, pixels or darker pixel white and uh, lighter pixel black. But basically, it's just a cutoff in the histogram. And I have some example, which is using manual threshold. So we can look, usually you need to have a, a knowledge about the picture you have, or you need to look at histogram to separate this image, which is in this case, we're trying to get the fingerprint out of the background. So I'm not sure if you have the, if anyone downloaded the MATLAB code. If you don't, that's fine. I can show in here. So for this, I have, this is the picture. First, we import the picture, change it to gray level, then specify the cut cutoff here. Then in this step, what I'm doing is creating the function, which is creating just point from zero to 255. Then here, doing a, this is a binary in MATLAB that change any values which is above the threshold to one, anything lower to zero. In here I'm changing the one value to 255, but it's not needed. MATLAB can use binary images, which is zero and one. So it's, this step is not needed, but I thought I should include it in here. Then here I'm just plotting the image with it's histogram and the output of the threshold. So if we run this code, what well, the file name is not here. I think I'm in the wrong folder. Uh, let me see. I was looking at other folder. Okay. So for this case, we chose a threshold of 150. If we look at the histogram, we have this is the background, the dark stuff. And this is, I mean, this is not the background. This is the stuff we want, which is the fingerprint, which has a lower grayscale values. And this is kind of the background. And we see if we choose any threshold in this region, we're going to have the similar result because this image has a a good contrast between the background and the the object we want to detect. Let me see. So this is manual threshold with one threshold. Now you can see choosing a threshold can be can be difficult sometimes. Like for this object, here if we choose like 50 threshold, we separate the whole, like we got two different tools. This is range. We can separate like this completely, but this object is not fully, like we didn't get it, the whole pixels because of the different levels. We have the levels is closer to the background. And this is one of the drawback for using one threshold or one cutoff point in the histogram. You might have like some object that is closer to the background or you might have more than one object that you cannot detect based on this method. And this is another example. For I think this is used to be in MATLAB but they, it's not there anymore. So here you can see more clearly like if you choose a high threshold, you include a lot of background. If you choose lower threshold, you include some of the stuff you're looking for, but you miss a lot of other stuff because of they are close to the background. Uh, 
Now, another method, as we said, sometimes you can have like three different normal distributions or three different stuff in the, in your image. So it'll be useful if you use like a multiple threshold, more than threshold to specify a region in the image so you can detect the desired object. And here's an like MRI image. For this case, here's they do history the equalization. This is I think one of the labs, the third one, which is the histogram equalization because you have low contrast to increase it. Then you specify the threshold, so the regions you're looking for, or the regions of interest. I tried to find this picture, I couldn't find it, so I used a different example for for the MATLAB code, which is this. This is in MATLAB. For this case. I have a code, but let me talk about this first. For this case, we want to find all the circles. We know this is the white circle, I mean black circle, and this is the white circle, and this is the background. So we can do it two ways. Either we find the background, which is what, what I did here. I took the background, make it white, then the object will be black, or you can do the opposite, find the threshold either this way or that way. It depends on your application, if you want to make it the object size black or white. But they give you the same result because you can invert the signal. So if you implement it, you, you basically we can run, modify the code we used previously here for multiple threshold. Same thing, we import the image and set up two cutoff points and use an if statement after we create our function which is just point going from 0 to 255 which represent each intensity in the image then we say any intensity above this cutoff point and below this cutoff point will be 1 which is our desired object or in this case our background and the same thing this is not needed you can leave it at 1 because MATLAB uses 1 binary images, it can detect binary images. So when we run it, we get this, the same thing we saw. We see clear separation between background and the objects we, we are looking for. And we can change the threshold, like if you, if we change this to 100, we're gonna miss some of the background, I think. I think 100. It's not that way, let to put it here. I'll move that one to... Like if you change the threshold, you get different results. So, as we said, the drawback of this method, you need to know what the image you're looking for. You need to look at the image because you're doing it manually. This sometimes will give you some advantage or disadvantage. Because you give you like a chance to look at the image and redefine all the shape of the image and the intensities and intensity range of the image. So it has some advantages and disadvantages. The main disadvantages has a lot of manual labor to do it. Okay. So multiple threshold. I have a question. Can you define which threshold did we use for each one of those pictures or each one of those segments? Like A, which region or what threshold did we use? Did we use one threshold or two threshold or what did we set up our value for picture A? Here's the histogram and here's the image. For A, what threshold do you use to get A? This is 90. This is 100, 120, 150, 200, 250. Yeah. So 120 is the threshold, so right above 9? Above here, above 100 almost, yeah. So B, you do this between the second and third? Yeah, 150 over here, yeah. So you can tell, this is the darkest object, which is this region. First we get this Second one, we include from this range, which is this lower gray level, 
to the black or higher gray level, which is in this region, include everything. What about this? This one? Just the region. Yeah, this is just a multiple threshold. We chose from 100 to 150, and we only got this gray level, this intensity. So I can, as you can see, you can, if you know the image, you know the histogram, and you know what you're looking for, you can redefine the threshold to satisfy your needs. But this is required the, some knowledge about the image and the application. Now, automatic thresholds. Here's some method that you can use to find the threshold automatically, so you don't have to do it manually. One is the percentile method, second mode method, iterative threshold, you do more iteration to find the threshold, then optimal threshold, which is the most used one, it's Utsu, and adaptive threshold. So the first one is percentile. Also, this one required some real knowledge of the image. Basically, you said, I have this amount of percentage in the image represent like a background, and this amount of percentage represent the foreground. So you need to know, like I said, I have 50% ob object, 50% of the intensity, like this is the histogram. You, f you find the property for each one, for each pin, add them together, same thing here. Then you specify your cutoff. You say 50 or 30 percent will be object or background, and the other will be object or background, based on some knowledge of the image and the size of the image. And this is saying the same thing. So we use a threshold to separate image into two sections or two like properties of uh, or distribution of the image. Yeah. And there's some MATLAB code that shows this method. You can change the the property of the percentage you want to see, and you get different images. So it's called percentile. So we have an image here. We load the image, and I found this code in line. There's it's this code. Here's the implementation. I think I have the link for this code in the presentation at the end of the presentation. But, bas but basically, you you have two parameters, which is the image you want to process or threshold, and the percentage, like how much percentage is for the fr background or how much percentage for the the foreground. Like if you say 20, which is 20 percent, we get image like this. So anything above, I think this is wrong. Like we group 20% of the pixels in this range together and 80% together. Like we assume our object occupies 20% of the image. And we assume like the object has, all the object has similar intensities. So we say we have object, we have 20% and have this amount, uh, this mean intensity. So we choose it for 20. If you choose it for 50, we're going to get more. You get more pixels. So this is required some knowledge of the image you want to do. And it's not that much powerful or useful, but it's useful for some cases. Another one is based on mode method, which is, is looking at the histogram. I mean, let me do. We look, we look at the histogram, and we assume for this one we have binomial distribution. So we look at the histogram two distributions. We know the mean, or we can find the mean, and we can find the standard deviation. and we know there's like separation or valley between those. So can we detect this value with somehow or some method? So we can find the optimal threshold. We can separate those, those different distribution. 
from each other. And one method is iterative threshold, which is we chose two means. We specify, like we look at the histogram, and we chose any two points in the picture. We said this is our mean and this is our second mean. Then we use this formula. We calculate a threshold. Then, then we select another threshold. Like we get those mean, maybe you get threshold here. So we separate, we get another mean for this group, another mean for this group. Then we do it this step again. Then the threshold will change, like maybe we shift over here. So we get a group of pixel here, a group of pixel here. We find the mean here, mean here. We keep doing this step, this method or this iteration until we get two, two values. They are the same until we, t value will be the same. Then we break the loop. Yeah. Another way of doing that is optimal threshold, which is looking at the histogram and trying to find this, the valley point or the break point between the two histograms. But for this one, we assume we have like two different or binomial distribution, which is two different objects or two different things in the image, which is like foreground and background or background and object. And those two pixel like group with the together based on their intensity. So, so this is saying the same thing. Choosing the so we're trying to choose the point that minimized within class variance, which is point that this variance would be minimum. That's mean we find all those groups are similar together. We try to find the point, then the group to the right, they have the lowest variance and the group to the, this, this is right and this is left, they have the lowest variance. That's mean all those stuff together, all those groups, they are close in value, in range together. So we make the variance close. And we try to separate the between class variance, which is there's a separation between the group here and the group here of pixels. The group here and the group over here. And this is some history. It was like invented in 1979. Utsu method or optimized threshold. It's based on the, as I said, you find like a weight between each classes and we try to separate those weights between the variance between them. And uh, it looks so in the histogram and the property for each pixel. Uh, I have some math uh, on this method and have an example about how to do like simple calculation. As I said, it should be by model, like you have two clear distribution or almost clear distribution to find like an optimum threshold. And another one is saying like the group of pixel here and group of pixel here should have like some coherence, should be belonging to each, uh, the same values in the each object. Another factor is the illumination, which is there should be a clear illumination in the whole picture, or should, shouldn't have a break of illumination in the picture. But sometimes when you take a picture of a piece of paper, you see a bright spot in the middle and darker spot. This will maybe cause the, pic the pixels in here, the dark pixel in here to be brighter, because of the light and the bright pixel at the edges to be darker because of lack of light on the image. And I have some more pictures about this issue, which is illumination. And this is like a graph of what we're trying to do. This is the between class variance, and this is within group variance or each class. And we know, I think this is not. Uh, this should actually be here. Like we know that within class variance plus the between class variance should be equal to the total variance. And we use this to find the Utsu method or the optimized uh, method based on the variance of total variance and the within class variance. And here's some terms and some calculation, I mean, some equations. 
the within class variance, which is, which is defined as the weight times the variance for one class plus the weight and the variance of the other class. And the weight is basically the a property, I mean, the, the probability for each pixel in each class. Like we look at this, when you look at the histogram, we look at all pixel here, we find their property, uh, probability. So we group all those probability, and we group all those probability. And this give us a weighted for this class within the whole image, and we group the other distribution or other, other section together so we can get another weight for this class in the image, for the next section in the image. And the mean is given by this. We group, which is each probability at each bin or each point, multiplied by that bin over the whole weight of that class. And this is the class variant, it's, uh, which is i, the point, minus mean, multiplied by probability over the weight of that class. Then we sum them together for individual point for the class one or class two. I mean, group one or class one and class two. But if you look at this method, we do a lot of calculation. And we can s stop here. But as we said, we're trying to maximize the between class different, like make the variance between classes maximum and within class minimum. That means we group all those picture, pixels together, or all group of pixels together, all, all those together, and separate them from each other. So we can, we have like two equation or two methods for the same question, or basically are the, the same thing, but you can look at it at different ways, either separate them, which is a group those together, or group those together, which is separate those classes from each other. And by looking at that, we know the to total variance is like within class plus the between class. So we found how to uh, within we know how to find the within class, but it will be more efficient to find it the variance. I mean, we know how to find the variance between between classes, but sometimes it's more efficient to find it within classes, which is going to be faster to calculate. So if we do some algebraic, this is the initial point. Usually, the first the first step usually is when you find the mean is you start from the first point and scan the whole image. You start the threshold, you set it to zero, then you keep scanning until you hit 255, which sometimes it takes some time, depending on the calculation of the variance and the mean. And here are some images of some optimal threshold, like you can see here. If you do calculation, we get this as an optimal threshold. And for those, those are kind of overlapping, but we can get the optimum threshold, or the best we can do for this case. For you can see all of them, there's some separation, except those two. If you look at, if you look at histogram, by eye you cannot decide which is the optimum threshold. But if you run it through the code, we'll give you this. It might be not pretty picture, but we'll give you some number. It'll be better than a human guess for this. And here's some example, like this, some calculation on how to calculate the Utsu method, like we have image, black squares, white, and some gray. So the first thing we can do is, like, for this case, Let's choose t value to be 3, which is here. So we can see the difference between two, two classes. So when you calculate the weight of the class, you take the number of pixels for each pin, which is 8, 7, 2, over total number of this and this, which is 36. This is the weight. So this class contributes to 0 0.4 of the image. And next class, same thing, which is 0 0.5. Then you find the mean, you take each point, multiply it by, like, probability, or like, and divide by 17, so you get the mean. And the variance, you do, 
each point minus the mean square times eight, which is number of pixel for this pin, number of pixel for this pin, and this is two. Then divide by 17, which is the within class. Now within class, the amount of pixels. So we got the variance and the weight for one class, variance and one, the other weight, I mean the weight and variance for the other class. Then we can run it through the Utsu method within class, ver uh, I mean variance, we get one number. Then we can do this for different points. We take like a different threshold. We take first threshold, weight zero, 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 then one because it's z all white. So we get a value of 3.1. We move it one step to one, we get 1.5. We keep moving it until we hit the, the five. We get value of 2.2. And we know we need the maximum separation. I mean, this is within class. So we need the lowest maximum separation within, between classes and minimum between, I mean, within the same class. That means we need to group the whole, all the pixels together or all that those intensities should be close together, which is this value, the lowest here. So we know we can choose the threshold as three. This will give us the optimum threshold or maximum separation between the pixels in the, in the image, or basically giving you two classes in the image based on the separation between their values. And for, as we said, for faster up approach, we use the between class variance. If you do this math, you can break it down to just the weight of background, which is one object, foreground, second, mean minus mean square. And this should be a faster approach because it has less term to calculate. And same thing, if we do it, here we get maximum separation between classes. Like we separate the classes from the maximum separation or maximum threshold that give you a group here and group here, they have different farther away a mean from each other which is three and which is the same result we got in the other step the first step so basically either way you use you're going to get the same answer but this one should be faster because you use less calculation and here's some image like if you use three threshold we got darker stuff here darker blocks and here's the kind of background over here and there's a MATLAB code, and best way to implement this, either you can write the whole code by yourself, which is a lot of math, a lot of calculation, or you can use a function in MATLAB, which is called a gray threshold, which basically it's gonna look at the image and do the same math, try to do like bimodal distribution, or assume there's two distinct classes in the image, and give you a threshold, give you a number. But this number will be between zero and one, which is kind of illumination, like the percentage, like zero represent like zero and one like 255 value, pixel values. And this is the way I think they used it because there's another function. We know before we got the threshold, then we have to create a function, then find like uh, an if statement to find pixels within above this threshold or lower than this threshold. But there is a function MATLAB can take the number range from zero to one and give you the threshold based on that number. We'll find the threshold for you. So you don't have either to find the manual threshold by yourself. You can use MATLAB function, which is called, I think, gray to BW, black and white. I think they could, they changed the name. It's maybe binarization. M to B, to BW. But I think they changed it. They, when I tried to run it, they said in MATLAB they change it to here's the Utsu method. So here function. We put the picture in. It's it's a gray level picture, so you don't have to change it to a gray level. You tell it here's the image. Separate this image into like two classes, and it will give you one number, which is 
a scale from zero to one and use this in binarize, which I think this is a newer function to use. And we'll give you the binary image. This image is zero ones. As we said before, you don't have to multiply zero by 255. MATLAB works with the binary images. Then here we plot the image and, and the thresholded image as well as the histogram to see the value that this function gave us. For the histogram, you just, it's zero to one. You multiply by 255 to get the value for the histogram. Is this the, so here's the Utsu method it says threshold will be like 126. And so let's look at this. So this is method using histogram to find the threshold. Basic, using like basic calculation to find an optimal threshold for one class of pictures or images. Another way is, as we said, there's an issue of illumination, like a light on the image. You get those pixels will be darker than expected, or not as expected, darker than the, the same pixels inside the direct sight of the light. So there's some ways to do it, which is like using some adaptive threshold. I have three or, or four different ways to do that. I'll show you the codes later, but like in this, like one of the basic ideas is instead of looking at the image as whole, we chop it down into small sections, then look at each region's alone. Like we assume like this is as, as a small section as the illumination in this section will be unified across the whole block. And this is like an example. Like for this, like we have like picture here. I think it's not showing that good. Illumination is different between different sections. Like if you do like Utsu, you see this darker because this is darker. And this is bright because of the light here, brighter. So you don't get like a, a clean image. So one way to do it is to chop it down into different sections. You got this section, you find like an optimal threshold either by, here's a histogram for that block, either by looking here, choosing this as a threshold or run it through the optimized threshold code and do the same thing for the next block, the next, next, next. Then you can put the picture together to get the final image. And here's an exam. This is a picture from MATLAB. It's a rice picture. You can see here's the pixels here or the rice here is brighter than the rice over there. So if you try to use the regular method, those will be darker than those. So the separation will not be even. So you're going to lose some data over here. So I think, yeah. If you use like regular threshold or Utsu you saw it here, you lost some of the objects or rice in the image. But if you use the adaptive, you can tell when you, if you section this to different sections, like for this case, I think 32, the block size was like 32 by 32. You section it to block size, add them together. You're going to get a better results because of the illumination issue. I think there's a code here. Where's code? It's so much Okay, here, adaptive threshold. I think this is the link for this code. It's basically, there's a function in MATLAB that can break the picture into blocks. But you need to be careful. If the black size is, if you, the sum of the black size is bigger than the picture, you're going to go outside the picture, which is going to assume, I think, black pic uh, pixels if it's larger than the image. So you need to be careful from the black size. You need to know kind of the size of your image. But for this picture, if we run this one, I think it's going to take a 
my computer was running slow today. I don't know why. It's gonna give me that image. Oh, it's freezing up. Yeah. Wait a few minutes, a few seconds. Continue. Uh, here, here you go. So you got the image and the other image. We can try to change the size of the window, like make it 50, 50. So you see here, because it's bigger size, make this. Or increase the edges, so you need to be careful. Choose the smaller sizes of the image. Five will be. Will be those artifacts here, because I found like this five will give you like this region, which is gonna try to separate it into black and white, which is all black. But try somehow to find a way to give you a white image inside this black region. So it's not... The size of the object uh, has a factor. Who can tell me how you choose the, the size of the local mask that is scaling this mask and how I choose a size? How should I know? The number of pixels in the image. This section is not high contrast. This is almost the same contrast in that section. Yeah. The bad contrast is here. Here and here. The problem is that it has different illumination. Yeah, different. Yeah. Where is this? adaptive kind of thresholding is used. But having the different elimination at different points. Sometimes give you wrong the size yeah. of the church region. How can you know which size you want? So clearly five pixels is not worth no. fifty pixels. Too much. Too much. Mm. But how should I know that it should be thirty or whatever the number is? Except trial and error. In the best way. Yeah, I always work. Yeah. Then I find 32 by try and error. Yeah. Ah. But this returns yeah. back into... The histogram. Method. Man, yeah. Because, look, if you are doing trial and error, it's an automatic method, like, why should... Do, do, you know, uh, uh, like, uh, if you know the number of, I guess, objects in the image, you have, I guess, I guess enough and wasted algorithm to uh, increase the so technically you need to know some prior knowledge no, of the image. So what kind of knowledge you need? Number of objects that you know of number sure. of objects? Yeah, like uh, I guess those white dots. Size for each object. Size mm. each object. It's size. Like average kind of size of the object, yeah. Sometimes the illumination area. Yeah, illumination yeah. area. You know the size of the object is such and such. Now what? How do you know which message to do? If it's like this, if there's a gap, you try to make it big as include some of the edges or some parts of the object. So you don't hit regions where it's all black in here if it's too small. So this is uh, the idea. You yeah. need to choose it based on the size or mm -hmm. average size of the object. And I mean, this is not the, the only possible choice. Illumination you factor. You also. Have to include at least some of the objects. Yeah. So you should include at least like one, two, three. Yeah, pixels. Smaller objects, pixels, otherwise you will not be able to, like, every mask should include at least some of the objects. Yes. So the mask minimally should be, it should be big enough to include at least some of the objects. Okay, otherwise yes. it will not work at all. Yeah. I think I'm almost done. I have more code now. 
uh, first presentation. And then, come on. So yeah, I think that here they have some. I found some MATLAB code either in MATLAB or in some website. I'm um, try to show them and explain them. Like, let me see what's the first one. Come on. So we ran the window threshold. Adaptive threshold. I think, yeah, this is MATLAB. There's, like, adaptive threshold. You can use your code like this. I got it from somewhere. Or there's a MATLAB code, which is adaptive threshold. You choose the image and this. I forget what is this. I think this is the intensity of the, like, the how much is background and how much is the foreground in the image. Yeah. And well, like I have a picture here, it's a text picture. Like if you see it, like this, it's even had worse, like illumination than the other. But this function has, did a good job of detecting all the text in the image. Another way to do this, like looking at the same picture, I found a guy, the way he did it, he first got the image, filtered the image with like some Gaussian, so it would become blurry, then subtract this from the original image. Basically when you filter it, you kind of leave something closer to illumination, whatever causing the illumination. We subtract it, you're gonna end up with like dominant object, which it has nothing to do with the illumination of the image. Then after you subtract that, you get an image with, with reduced illumination effects, then we can run the Utsu method, or you can do manual threshold to detect this image. Like, here's some plots using the same image. Like, clearly, you can change the size of the window and change, maybe change the threshold to get better segmentation. But you get this image, you get similar results to the MATLAB, but it's, this is harder to detect. But here's how it looks. It took the image, this is after the Gaussian blurring. If you look at it, it looks like the illumination. It looks like the, like the background illumination. When you subtract it from the image, you get something like this, which is much, much cleaner than the original image we started with, which is this. Then, oh, where is that one? Then you do the, like, Utsu method, symbol Utsu method. You left up with the text. If you have a better image, you get a better result. But the illumination here is very bad in this image. But this is another method to do it, is to get rid of the illumination. Is doing filter here. If you look at the code. This is, this one, yeah, here. You do image. This is filtered, median filter minus the image. You get that one that I showed you. This is display them together. Then here you find the threshold, the gray threshold. And then you return the binary image from that threshold. It was an interesting method of get rid of the illumination. Then another thing, this is multi-threshold. In MATLAB, this is multi-threshold using Utsu. Same way like in here, we trying to use or separate the picture based on two classes. But in MATLAB, there's a function that can separate the picture in multi-classes. You can specify how many classes are in the image. Like if you look at the, I show you an image where we use manual threshold, like we got some circles, black and white, and a gray background. If when I use the Utsu threshold over there, it's not gonna work because you have like a three different classes or three different objects. If you run this threshold in MATLAB, this is will be will give you better result. Basically, you load the image, then you do multi threshold number of threshold you think in the image. This is also you need some prior knowledge about the image. Then this is 
is going to put those threshold into segments. Then in MATLAB, you create like different colors for each segment here. Then you show that, like, let's see, something like this. You got this image, we tell it, we know there's three classes in image. One background, one white, and one black circles. So it's going to try to use like Utsu and find diff three different means in the image and give you like three classes. Each class is with a different color in the image. And another way is the super segmentation, like we super pixels, which is like segment the image heavily, like not just like two segments. Like for this case, we see segment the image with 500 like different segments, which is going to go to the image. Let me show you, it would be better if you show you here. Like in this image, we see we need 500 different segments. So you look at this block, it has like a kind of predefined size, you group those together, then go here, you group similar pixels, it try, it try to group similar pixels together. But the issue here, because you have black and white, it's harder to group those together. It's easier to see around this the dog, the edges you see here. You group those pixels together because they have similar characteristic. This is good for color images because it can group different colors together. So basically, we group, we segment the pic, the image into like 500 different segments. Then we find the mean for each section, which is basically like downsampling the image from like, I don't know how many samples to like 500, which it looks like this. If you reduce the number of segments here, like use 50, you can see the effect. It's going to choose like, choose bigger segments, it chose, start here, chose bigger segments, then group whatever it thinks it's similar together. Here it's harder to group over here because it's a big segment over here. But this is, we'll have this like this. We'll almost get the same image of 5,000. 5,000? more than 5,000 people. Pixel, yeah, I don't know. It depends on the size, yeah. Almost close, like here. This can be, if you look... I'm trying to get to the size, which is, like, how many of those squares you have. The, those squares? Yeah. This is 5,000? 2,000. It's on region? Maybe 2,000, I think. I never tried it. So basically, you can do this, then run the edge detection or other methods. Almost, too much, yeah. yeah, too much, but oh, we tried it before, it didn't include all of them. Okay. Yeah, looks yeah, better. Uh, 700. Yeah, it's better. Yeah. But if you look at the resulting image after you segment those, you can run edge detection and get a lot of features. Yeah. You might be able to tell this is done. Like in segment segmentation, basically we try to group some pixel together based on criteria, then look at colors, value, shape, then decide what is this object or what is this. Like you can see, this is a dog, something like that. But you can see basic thresholds. The most important thing is the histogram. You need to know histogram and some prior knowledge of the image. You need to know some prior knowledge of the image because most of them depend on that. And here's some credits and things. That's it. Thank you.